there's a lot of excitement with chat gpt the large language model uh, so some people are saying that perhaps it can replace teachers uh, let's uh, i wanted to test it out so uh, i'm teaching advanced mechanics of solids but i gives it something easier to do first of all i asked it to write an introductory lecture on the topic of torsion for a class on mechanics of solids as you can see here so it has started out very nicely here uh, this is actually very good uh, there's nothing wrong here very general uh, interesting kind of a uh, thing uh, this is like this is me testing it out for the first time here and you see i don't have any stored conversations here uh, so uh, this is good and then i asked it to follow it up with the derivation for the formula of the shear stress for the torsion of a shaft so what it gave here is a little bit worrisome because it is giving up the formula is tau is equal to t by j that is not correct okay so uh, anyone who has studied torsion will know that tau is equal to t r by j so this uh, this e equation is not even dimensionally correct so it has given some explanations which is good but the formula itself is wrong so i told it that there is a mistake in the formula of the shear stress in the previous response please correct it and answer again so uh, very nicely it has apologized for the mistake and then it gave something which is even worse so this doesn't make any sense this particular formula it doesn't make any sense but then it again wrote it very nicely um, but then i again told it it is still wrong it should be this tau is equal to tr by j uh, and i even gave it uh, the, the the correct expression for the j uh, i think for the j it was giving it correctly earlier anyway so it again says i apologize again for the mistake very very polite uh, as, and it says that you are correct so i am correct all right and it is uh, it is it has accepted my suggestion and it has given this thing okay great so as far as torsion is concerned by itself it would it was not able to give the correct thing uh, let's see if we can go for some other kind of a discussion uh, maybe something from flexure uh, let's give something similar uh, give an introductory lecture on bending stresses for a class on mechanics of solids this is very common topic um, let's see if we can do this <clears throat> i think it's taking some time uh bending stress is a type of mechanical stress that occurs when a force is applied to an object and it causes the object to bend okay good this type of stress occurs in objects such as beams bars and rocks that are subjected to a lo load that carries a bending moment fine the bending stress is proportional to the load applied and the distance from the neutral axis okay it's getting technical now which is the axis in the cross section of the object that remains unstressed under bending so this part i really like so i think in many textbooks it is it is written wrongly the, regarding the neutral axis but it has defined this thing correctly here good so bending stress is different from axial stress which occurs when a force is applied along the longitudinal axis of an object uh, causing it to stretch or compress all right the formula for bending stress is calculate calculated on the bending moment divided by the second moment of area this also i like very much the second moment of area business uh, some some textbooks is written as moment of inertia i personally prefer it as second moment of area so that's good uh, let's see the actual formula oh man <laughs> it has again made a mistake so sigma b the bending stress it is writing as m by i now any first year student even can tell you that this is not m by i this is my by i this is dimensionally incorrect it is written so many sophisticated things but the formula itself is incorrect i have to tell it to correct uh nice explanation but the formula itself is incorrect please correct it let's see if it can correct itself <coughs>
इट इज वेरी पोलाइट आई हैव टू गिव इट दिस मच वेरी वेरी पोलाइट हाँ नाउ इट गिव्स इट करेक्टली गुड एम वाई बाई आई थैंक यू फॉर पॉइंटिंग आउट द मिस्टेक आई मीन आई आई विश आई विश स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ दिस जेनरेशन वेर एज पोलाइट एज एज दिस लार्ज लैंग्वेज मॉडल एनी वे सो गुड can you perhaps gives gives some real world examples where the bending stress formula is applied so this is a question i often face from my students let's see if it can give nice examples nice application examples here bridges are subjected to loads from vehicles when earthquakes engineers use the bending stress formula to determine the bending stress in the beams and girders that make up the bridge structure this information is then used to design the bridge so there are certain things in which this is actually very good where we have to use words and describe things in a very qualitative fashion it is really good uh nice it is typing things out faster than i can speak <clears throat> aircraft wings good these are actually very very good examples bicycle frames this is my favorite example all right so engineers use the bending stress formula to determine the ma maximum bending stress in the frame it, i mean the it, it doesn't have a brain of its own so when it is pulling from various sources it it is kind of a bit, uh, being a little bit repetitive i would not say things like this in a class uh, maybe try to make it a little bit more interesting but as far as the correctness of the examples are concerned this is absolutely fine uh these are just a few examples of how the bending stress formula is used in real world applications by understanding and applying the formula engineers can design objects that are strong and safe for the loads that will be subjected to all right can you give some examples uh where the bending stress formula uh may not be used so if a student asks this question i understand where uh, what what the student is asking me let's see if it can understand this thing this is a little bit tricky okay so i laid a trap for it and it fell into it so uh so when a student basically asks when a bending stress formula cannot be used he he or she is asking actually about the limitations of it uh regarding uh like in what kind of geometry we may not use it so even if there is bending moment uh we cannot use that kind of a formula uh depending on certain parametric regimes of the aspect ratios of the beam uh, but here it has understood it completely differently uh what it has answered it is technically not wrong uh but uh, in a in a classroom situation as a teacher i would understand what the student would mean uh, but it has completely failed it has given examples from other chapters of mechanics of solids so of course we cannot use a bending stress formula i mean you can give other examples like buckling and other things where the bending stress formula cannot be used so okay uh can you perhaps uh give some examples or maybe i i, I give it a bit more more hint um even if a beam is subjected to a bending moment under what restrictions uh the bending stress formula cannot be used i think i have kind the wording may be a little bit confusing but let's see if it can if it can address this
all right under certain assumptions and conditions what are those uh just include non uniform cross sections um okay it means constant and uniform along its length okay that's good that's actually very good non linear material behavior very very good good large deformations right Uh, well now it is just going away on a tangent uh, of course for temperature changes we cannot uh, use this but this is the third point is very good the large deformations thing uh now this is just going away completely on a tangent but i think i think overall overall this is good uh especially i li like like its answers regarding the nonlinear material behavior and the and the large deformations um in the previous response if in the previous response can you include a point regarding the influence of the aspect ratio of the beam cross section on the pending stress formula restrictions i'll be really impressed if it can give it if it can give the correct answer to this okay i don't know whether it is thinking or it's getting too much loaded did i break it <clears throat> perhaps i should have made it clearer is not giving anything come on I wonder what happens if I write something in between. It's giving something. <clears throat> okay. It's still sticking with the non-uniform cross section. I'll just stop generating this thing. uh maybe i'll just let it let it do its thing i'll make the i'll make the suggestion clear okay it's hiding something ah it is trying to give something i don't know what happened here anyway uh what it was trying to say it is it is i think it was going in the right direction i wonder what happens uh okay okay i'll give it to it, uh, it it's it's done a much better job than i would have expected this is really impressive okay i'll save and submit anyway i think this is good enough uh what if i write this uh
So I'm asking it to comment on what happens if the ratio of the Breen cross section dimensions is not too large compared to the, um, uh, sorry, the ratio of the beam cross section dimensions to the length of the beam. is not too small. Let's see if it can get this. <coughs> okay, it is sticking to that answer. Uh, so to a student who is, uh, so this is actually problematic. Uh, so it is going into the kind of things uh, which I would not discuss while discussing bending of beams. Uh, because I know what the student uh, knows and does not know. And uh, since since the whole topic of this discussion was whether it, chat GPT can replace a teacher, uh, I think at its current level of sophistication, uh, I mean, I mean, it is very capable, certainly it's very capable as we have seen, but uh, there are certain things which a teacher can understand uh, what can be discussed and may not be discussed in front of a student who has some prior knowledge or not. Uh, this, as it, as it currently stands, is not able to do it. And of course it cannot do it. Okay, maybe I'm expecting way too much of it. Uh, but I am impressed by, by, first of all, by the fluency of it. It is wonderful. I mean. Uh, it is indeed a language model and uh, even the technical correctness of it uh, with a little bit of a prompting from my, from me it is quite good okay and and i think as if i keep on using it it'll it'll learn from me and then uh, it'll get better okay so there you have it uh, this was my little reaction to how uh, there is it may or how there may be a possibility of chat gpt replacing me I think for now I'm okay. Thank you.